Greetings. Well, things are quiet around the house this morning. Uh, Joe has returned to California, and so we're uh, not putting stuff in pots and moving it around and worrying about soil or anything today. Um, it's quiet in the neighborhood, too, because Kilauea has gotten a little bit on the sleepy side. Um, it's a tiny bit of lava oozing out at the ocean front, uh, creating a little bit of lays. But uh, all of the fissures have ceased producing lava. Uh, there is still sulfur dioxide coming up out of some of the fissures, uh, but pretty much they're crusted over. And so now it's a wait and see game as to what comes next. Uh, the island is very seldom completely calm. That doesn't usually happen for long and so calmness here and no eruptions is probably more frightening than eruptions at least when Pele gets busy we know what she's up to uh, right now we just don't know what's gonna happen geologists are warning that we've seen lulls like this in the past uh, during previous eruptions and so it's very possible that uh, within a day or a week uh, things could get started again in the meantime, up in the park, um, very little is happening. The earthquakes have gone away. Um, the caldera has ceased collapsing. I keep crossing my fingers that we're actually going to be able to get back in there again. I miss the park a lot. Uh, as far as the uh, Kapoho Bay, well, it's a complete loss. Filled in um, the uh, Ahalanui, the hot ponds, that's filled in. It's a complete loss. It's not there anymore. Mm -hmm. Although it's still hot water out there somewhere. Plenty of it. So we may end up with some new ponds somehow, somewhere. Um, the uh, Isaac Holly, though, the um, county park uh, that was where we launched most of the boats here on this side of the island. Many of the boats would go in at the ramp. There aren't too many places where you can launch on this side. Um, the boat launch is still there. Yeah, uh, the the little harbor it was in is now closed in by a brand new black sand beach. Um, and there's a, like a lagoon around the boat launch and this black sand beach that swept in there. Uh, as the lava moves from the flows into the ocean, it explodes when it hits hot seawater. Tidy little particles of the lava are created and that's what makes black sand. And then the black sand will sweep with the currents and it went to uh, the south of where the lava flows were entering and it pretty much covered the whole front side of uh, Isaac Halley. Uh, Isaac Halley used to have some relatively shallow shore um, that was fairly calm for this side of the island and people would go in there with uh, boogie boards and I'd see people wading and swimming but the the bottom and the shoreline were just rock it was you know a, a lava and it didn't look like much fun frankly you would have had to wear shoes to go in there without a doubt well all of that is now covered by a nice smooth black sand beach and so if one of these days uh, if this ever settles down so we can get back in the area and they go ahead and bulldoze some roads in so we can travel through Lower Puna again, we may have a very good new black sand beach. This could be a really wonderful thing actually. We didn't have many good beaches over here so it might happen. We'll find out whether it's swimmable or not pretty soon I'm sure because people are going to give it a try. Uh, looking at uh, uh, helicopter views of Leilani Estates yesterday um, there's nothing left alive in there uh, whatever didn't get covered by the lava you know it's just buried I can't even begin to think where my friend Jim's house is it's just this black sea no features no nothing you can't tell what used to be there it's like a parking lot uh, but then there are areas where the lava didn't inundate and I mean every blade of grass every tree It's brown the whole place is brown. It looks like it got blasted and it's all from the uh, uh, From the so2 gas has killed all the vegetation uh, We can assume that any of the wild roosters and maybe the cokey frogs 
are gone too, I'll be relocating to quiet areas <laughs> where they have no frogs. Um, so, anyway, speaking of frogs, <laughs> or amphibians anyway, uh, we had a, a cane toad invade one of my rain catch pails here in the nursery. I don't know how he got in there. Uh, I don't know how he's getting out either, but uh, we caught ourselves a great big cane toad. Uh, otherwise, uh, out in the garden, I've been doing a little bit of planting. Hello, Mr. Toad. <laughs> Are you enjoying yourself? There is his immense toadliness, who has uh, found a five-gallon pail in my backyard. Seems quite happy. Um, I believe that uh, must be thinking that's a breeding pond or something. I don't know how the heck he got in there. It's quite a job. He's not going to get out too easy, I tell you that. I have to give him a hand with some good-looking fresh rows of peanuts. Yep. Over here, I went ahead and put in some brand new achacha trees. We have six of them in the field now, the uh, Garcinia humilis. And the next row over, we have uh, uh, four of the interesting varieties of uh, Jaboticaba or Plinia that uh, were ready to go. And they're out here now. Uh, I also have uh, some peanut butter uh, fruit growing right here. That's this guy. I've never even eaten one of these or know much about growing them, but friends drop seeds on me, so we got one now. Uh, here's a cutting I made from an Australian finger lime. That's a pretty cool fruit. Uh, tastes like lime, but it kind of feels like uh, fish eggs. Kind of like eating sushi with citrus flavor. <laughs> I've been placing cherry tomatoes uh, temporarily in between my fruit trees. I get uh, plenty of uh, edgeless over there with two cherry tomatoes, and then beyond them I have some habanada, some of the sweet habaneros. Pigeon peas that were used for stick mulch are all popping back. You can see them in the distance, but now I have added another row of new ones right here along the living fence pineapples. Now one of my friend James and I uh, got more pineapples put in the ground the other day here. Uh, James is one of the uh, local horticultural students over here at Hilo and he's been dropping by to help us out and learn a thing or two. It's been nice to have a little help. Well, it's pineapple season here and we have been actively harvesting Anybody out there around the island that happens to want some organic white pineapple, give us a call. We got plenty. Here's quite a pile. Well, there you have it. The garden, the lava, a bit happening in the garden. Lots of pineapples happening out here, but not too much eruption. Mostly we are erupting pineapples this week. So uh, anybody out there who needs white pineapples, come on talk to us because we got them. We got them, uh, $3 a pound this year. Aloha, happy gardening, and don't forget to hang loose.